Novichok Chemical Formulas are not terrorist weapons. While I was writing my book, State Secrets, an Insider's Chronicle of Russian Chemical Weapons Program, some people from Washington persistently advised me not to include the formulas of the chemical agents of the Novichok series in my book. These formulas were known to all countries of the world except for Russia, and they are not on the control list of the Chemical Weapons Convention. It seems that some people thought it would be much better if we just ignored Novichok and, and its precursors. Then we could count on the goodwill of the Russian government. I asked why it would be a bad idea to publish this information since it would be for the safety of all people. Then the government would work to have those chemical agents and the precursors included in the, in the control list. They responded. Terrorists could use them for the criminal actions. This kind of reasoning is used all the time now to scare people and prevent any discussion. We are already used to ignoring a lot of real problems thanks to that. I reminded these people that the formulas of VIX gas, sarin, and zoman have already been published. In some books, it's even possible to find the basics of the production technologies of these agents. No one tried to give me a logical counter-argument or even make a good point. I suspect that the reason for this is that these people really have no real knowledge about their topic of conversation, chemical weapons. To begin with, let's consider the probability of the production of chemical agents by terrorists. In reality, production is an extremely tricky, dangerous and high-tech business. Can any serious chemical engineer or science imagine that this production could take place in an underground bunker without highly trained and qualified personnel and without extremely strict safety measures somewhere in the Swat Valley in Pakistan? It's not even science fiction, but, but a pure lie because of the nature of these agents. Anyone who tried to synthesize and produce them this way would immediately kill himself. In Gosniok, the Russian Center for Developing Chemical Weapons, where I worked for 26 years, all science and engineers, including departmental and laboratory chiefs, had to pass safety exams every year. The technical personnel had to pass them every six months. The strictness of the technical measure in the laboratories and factories that produce chemical weapons was unprecedented. Even under these circumstances, there were many victims and the consequences were often lethal. My friend Andrei Zhelyznikov died after being poisoned with the Novichok agent A232, even though he was very experienced and was observing all safety measures. Formals in books cannot replace experience, highly qualified engineers, and the technological secrets of production. Without them, everything's absolutely useless. My colleague, Mr. Lipman, who was once the chief engineer at the Volgograd factory for the production of chemical agents in Russia, told me about how the Soviets brought a whole factory for the production of Zarin over for, from Germany after World War II. With the assistance of two German engineers, they tried to begin the production of Zarin there, but it took six years for it to get started. The start of a small pilot plant for the production of Soviet VX gas took more than eight years. The experimental production of the chemical agents like sarin and VX gas in Iraq 
were also an instructive example. After the Gulf War, my colleagues from Gosniok, along with some Western scientists, found some bombs filled with sarin and VX gas. But in reality, this was pretty much pure garbage, consisting mostly of the product of, of decomposition. It's known that some German, German businessmen sold the technolo technologies and assisted them in this, this startup. But the primitive technological level of the country made it possible, impossible for the anything not worth it to be produced. Another reason why it's impossible to, for terrorists to use chemical agents is that they cannot create weapons from them. Chemical weapons are chemical agents carried in sophisticated bombs or rockets that have reliable delivery systems or launchers. In the case of binary weapons, two chemicals must be mixed together perfectly during flight. The mixing and temperature need to be carefully controlled. Only special military personnel can operate them with minimal risk of poison or death. Also, it's impossible to send chemical agents out in envelopes as someone did with anthrax spores in the US. So far, only the own Shinrikyo cult was able to use zarin gas, which has a relatively high volatility, to stage a series of coordinated attacks on the Tokyo Metro in 1995. It's clear this happened because of flaws in the security system of this metro. The volatility of the Novichok and VX gas are hundreds of times less than that of Sarin. For that reason, it's impossible to use them, use the same kind of methods Om Shinrikyo did, and release them exposing targets. In conclusion, it's clear that chemical agents cannot be used by terrorists because of their lack of accessibility, their insurmountable difficulty of manufacture, the lack of delivery systems, and the dangers posed to terrorist operators. All of the advice people gave me not to publish formulas of Louisville chemical agents based on the argument that terrorists would use them doesn't ring true. These agents should be acknowledged and immediately put under the control of the OPC W, the organization that administers the Chemical Weapons Convention. We need to stop mystifying chemical weapons and then and the non-existent biological weapons. It's time to stop scaring the American people with imaginary problems in order to blindly extract as much money as possible from them for protection. If you look at the funding these scary tactics have generated for various projects, I'm sure that some of them were necessary. But you can also be sure that some unnecessary pet projects a lobbyists were also included. All these funds should be redirected for practical measures that will truly improve the security of our country and protect us from real danger.